First John chapter three, verses two through three say, Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And every man that hath this hope in him purifieth himself even as he is pure. In verse 3 of 1 John chapter 3, John writes of this hope that we have in him. You know that hope is a confident expectation in something that's going to happen. It's coupled then with an eager anticipation. The word hope should conjure up in our minds really the sitting on the edge of our seat, waiting and knowing and trusting and believing that something is going to take place. And in verse three, John says that that hope, that anticipation and that expectation is found in the Lord Jesus Christ. Every man that hath this hope in Christ, he says. I want us today in our Walk Talks podcast, give consideration to this hope. Would you notice, first of all, with me, the content of, of this hope. First of all, that this hope is a current hope. If you notice in verse two, John writes to remind the reader of their present identity. Here is the current hope. And it's found in the very first phrase, beloved, now are we the sons of God. In my Bible, I've underlined that word now. This is the here and now. This is the current reality, the current identity. We are the sons of God. For those of us who have received the love of God that we talked about yesterday, that God has bestowed on us, we are called the sons of God. This is not just a future reality, but a present position. This is the standing of every Christian today. We are now the sons of God. You know that it's true. We don't know all of what is going to come, but we can know, second of all, not just that we are called the sons of God, but that he is going to appear, that Christ is coming back. And that's implied in this second verse. It doth not yet appear what we shall be. We don't know everything in our life and in our mind, in our world, in our body that's going to be changed. We don't know those things, but we know, verse 2 says, that when he shall appear, we can know from Scripture, we've been promised in Scripture, that Christ is coming back. John 14 and verse 3 says, And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again. Jesus said, Colossians 3 and verse 4, when Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall ye also appear with him in glory. The current hope that we can know and experience today is that we are the children of God and that Christ is coming. We can have that hope for the here and now and believe that what Christ said is going to take place. But there's also a coming hope. There is an anticipation and an expectation of what is going to take place in the future. And like I said, we don't know all the details of what is to come. So there's the current hope, there's the here and now, but I want you to notice, second of all, there's the coming hope. And I call that the there and later. What's going to take place in the future? Listen to what verse two says. But we know, this is the second half of the verse, that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. We know that when he shall appear, first of all, we we will be like him. Our bodies will be changed. Our very lives will be transformed. We will be made finally and fully into the image of Jesus Christ. And the reason for that is in the very end of verse two, we shall see him as he is. We are going to see the Lord. We're going to see him face to face. What a day, glorious day that's going to be. So think about this for just a moment. We will become like him someday because we see him as he is. There's beholding, there's seeing, and there is becoming. But may I just emphasize to you in the podcast today by way of application that beholding and becoming is not just a future event for the Christian. There is a way to know the Lord Jesus Christ, to behold him in the wonderful word of God, to see his ministry, to hear his words, to know how he interacted with others, to know what he taught. And as we behold Jesus Christ and all he taught and all he said and all he did, we are able to become like him in learning from him.
2 Corinthians 3 and verse 18 says, We all with open face beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord. We are changed. We are becoming something. We are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. And may I just say to you that what or who you are beholding is who or what you are becoming like. And this is a real challenge to all of us as we live in this world that we would not spend the majority of our time on things that do not matter for eternity. This is why it's important that we don't idolize humans and work and strive to be like LeBron James, to strive and work to be like a famous actor. No, we look to the Lord Jesus Christ and behold him. And the emphasis here is that we are in his word daily. And that is the process that we are going to experience someday. This is the future hope, the coming hope that's going to take place there in heaven. And later on down the corridors of time, we will see him and we will become like him. Put your hope in what you know to be true about that day. Trust that here and now we are the sons of God and that there is a coming hope that we will see him and we will be like him. Notice second of all with me, the consequence of this hope. In verse 3, the Bible says, Every man that hath this hope, referring back to verse 2, in him, here's the application, here's the consequence, purifieth himself, even as he is pure. The truth is that the current and coming hope must change and will change the way that we live as the sons and the daughters of God. And the consequence of hope is, in verse 3, purity purifying ourselves, seeking to become more like the Lord Jesus Christ in our daily life. Purity here is literally freedom from moral stain. And think of how this fits into John's overall argument. Remember, you've been saved. You've been grafted into the family of God. And when that takes place, you will want to purify yourself as you see the day of the Lord approaching, as you anticipate and expect the Lord to come back. Purify yourself. Put off the deeds of immorality. Set aside the weights and the hindrances that are besetting us. Live lives that are pure. And this purification is predicated not on the world's standards of purity, but notice in the very end of verse 3, the purity of the God of the ages, even as he is pure. Listen, thinking about seeing Christ, considering the day that we stand before him, changes the way that we live. Second Corinthians 7 and verse 1 says, Having therefore these promises, dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. James 4, 8 says, Draw nigh to God and he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners. Purify your hearts, ye double-minded. 1 Peter 1 and verse 15 But as he which hath called you is holy, so be ye holy in all manner of conversation. As we think about the hope that we have in the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, may we be motivated and inspired to purify our lives in our moral conduct, to eliminate sinful habits, and to seek to be pure, so that one day when we stand before the Lord, we can hear him say, Well done, my good and faithful servant.